Hi-Pi day. Today we look at a very interesting approximation method for Pi. But first, let's look at this 1968 Putnam exam problem A1. Pause the video and give it a try. I promise you it's not that difficult. The integral is strictly greater than zero, but its upper bound is associated with pi. 1 over 1 plus x squared is the antiderivative of arctangent x. This is where the pi comes from, and the numbers are reduced to 22 over 7 nicely, which has been the best pi approximation for humankind for thousands of years. But if you look at this expression, where does it come from? Is it a random expression that happens to work? Can we have better approximations of pi starting from it? The answer is yes. 27 years after that exam, Professor Blackhouse published a paper that introduced the so-called pancake functions. Here A, B, C are all rational numbers, and the Putnam question is just a special case. Let's plot the first few integrands when m and n are equal. F to 2 looks like a quadratic equation, but it's flattened between 0 and 1. What does this look like? A pancake, right? When m and n become larger and larger, the pancake becomes thinner and flatter. When m and n are both 3, we have to zoom in one more time to see the pancake. The idea is that we can keep squeezing this pancake such that we can get a finer and a finer upper bound of pi. Back to the formula. Backhouse proved that if the following condition is satisfied, then c is zero. The positivity of this integral indicates that pi has a lower bound of negative a over b. But b can be negative, so sometimes this is an upper bound. I'm just going to use b as positive for the simplicity of discussion. The simplest upper bound is basically find the maximum value of the integrand between 0 and 1. It's like you are getting a box for the pancake for the takeoff. Of course, those bounds are not optimal and people have figured out many different ways to limit this tighter. For example, this modification gives us the familiar ratio 355 over 130. Another example is to prove this much tighter bound. We can simply pick the pancake function when m and n are both 8, and the proof becomes trivial. Does such a pancake taste delicious? I'm not sure, my friend. But I'm sure mathematics tastes as delicious as it, if not more.